Hi, I'm Tom Scarpello of Revology Cars, and this is car number 126, a 1966 Shelby GT350 convertible in Wimbledon white with black Napa leather interior. Today, I'm gonna to take you on a walk around of this car, and then we're gonna go for a drive. Let's get started. Okay, so this is car number six out of 12 limited edition Shelby GT350 convertibles that we will produce. This car is Wimbledon white. It does not have the Le Mans stripes. Le Mans stripes are actually an option in 66. So this car only has the GT350 stripes on the side. It's equipped with the 10 spoke Shelby wheels, which I think is the right choice for the 66 Shelby. It is the most authentic looking uh, choice available. Standard 66 Shelby uh, mirror side scoop and at the back you've got your turn down tips. Um, this client chose the export lighting package that features the uh, amber turn signals in the rear and there's also a um, fog light that's integrated into one of the reverse lamp housings. On the interior the 66 Shelby featured the standard interior and that had a uh, black wrinkle finish veneer on the dash and the cluster. And uh, so this client chose that finish. We actually create this in house. So we use a, a laser cut aluminum trim and then we paint it with a black wrinkle paint. Now this is a full Napa leather. It's a Porsche. OEM leather. The door panels have a perforated uh, insert, as do the seats. It's called a Mark 10 perforation. That Mark 10 indicates the size of the perforations and the spacing. The espresso steering wheel, and it also features our new um, molded loop carpet. So this is a, a nice development. Up until this point, had to hand fit, cut and hand and fit the carpet, which is a very tedious process, but we've made the investment to create a molded carpet that is designed for our floor pan. Clearly the transmission tunnel is significantly larger than on the original car, so we couldn't use the existing carpet that's out there in the aftermarket. We had to design our own carpet. Um, the other benefit of the molded carpet is it, it comes with a mass backing, which helps to uh, reduce noise vibration and harshness that comes up through the roadways been a lot of discussion about what's going on recently in the automotive industry where dealers are marking up products well over the MSRP, <clears throat> you know, particularly new products that are hot, that are in demand, that the manufacturers can't produce enough of. A lot of, a lot of uh, frustration, I, I guess. The consumers that, that think, you know, the dealers should sell it at MSRP. They, they don't have the right to mark it up. You're taking, you know, profit, you know, kind of unfairly. But, you know, on the other hand, the dealers say, look, if I sold it at MSRP, this guy would just buy it and flip it, and he would make $20,000 or $30,000 because there just aren't enough cars to go around. There's more demand than supply. On this particular topic, I agree with the dealers. Nobody likes dealers, let's face it. But the dealers perform an important function, which is to manage that supply and demand imbalance. You know, why do people not like car dealers? I mean, the, the truth is, it's been a protected uh, business. You know, franchise laws favor the franchisee, and, you know, dealers have taken advantage of that and failed to provide value, and consumers don't see the value that dealers provide <clears throat> and so they resent that and they they don't like to pay for things that they don't see value in and so this is kind of you know where we've come now after all of this time thank you so so this is where we are now so now you've got some significant things happening in the automotive distribution channel now Ford's estimated that they're at a competitive disadvantage to Tesla in their EV business because Tesla's distribution model saves them about $2,000 a car. Now, you know, Ford has, has made headlines recently with splitting its business into the ICE business and the EV business, and the EV business is going for an online 
uh, distribution model. So Ford's, you know, generated a lot of controversy, you know, through this announcement that they plan to sell EVs direct. Um, do I think it's wrong? No, I don't think it's wrong. I think you always have to be looking at reinventing your business, whatever business it is. Uh, I think dealerships really need to look at their business. When, when, when your customer doesn't like you and they don't think you provide value, that's kind of a problem. You know, the person that's pushing this at Ford is the CEO, Jim Farley, who I know, I've never worked for Jim, but I think I know him well enough to, to say, not afraid to take a controversial position. You know, in any business, I mean, you have to make tough choices to move things forward. If you, if you want to change the status quo, you know, you might take some unpopular positions. And that's just, just the way it is. It's really tough. So, meanwhile, back at Revology, um, we don't have to worry about those corporate politics. So we'll just keep building the best cars we can build and making our customers happy. All right. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs> All right.